this is Market King, the unexpectedly outstanding punter for the at the time Oakland Raiders. As he stands out on the field to take his first preseason punt in 2013, many assume he's just a fill-in, a preseason punter, since he's just an undrafted free agent out of a small Division II HBCU school, three combinations of words and acronyms that typically don't correlate with high quality NFL punters. On top of that, it's not like the Raiders were in need of a punter. Sure. Their guy was getting a little long in the tooth going into his 13th year, but we're talking about the Tom Brady of punters, the man parentally known as the GOAT, the 9-time All-Pro, 7-time Pro Bowler Shane Leckler. There's no way this unknown, undrafted punter is going to come in and... well... That was surely an unexpected twist, but you know what? It's the Raiders, and if you should trust any organization to pick up a punter and have them be freakishly good out of nowhere, it should be the Raiders. I mean, Ray Guy, Shane Leckler, Marquette King, who I'm sure you don't even need this long-winded introduction for, now AJ Cole. Okay, I digress. That needs its own video. Back to King. So this guy comes in and knocks off one of the greatest punters of all time, and is in Insane. In his first year, he puts up almost a 49-yard average across the season, which would be Shane Leckler's fifth best season if it belonged to him, and it was coupled with a very respectable 40.1-yard net, but at the time was just top 10 in the NFL. 2014 and 2015 would just be solid middle-of-the-pack years for King. Of course, there'd be some dominating games, like against Miami in 14, he was crushing them with a 46 yard out of force defense inside their own 10 followed by a field flipping 52 yard fair catch out of his own end zone where in a couple of drives his unit would try to make miracles happen as he hits a short miss hit but his coverage team gets the ball out and pounces on it to get the Raiders the ball back where they'd gain no yards and you'd find Marquette out there again who'd hit another banger to pin the fins on their 10 yard line and then he'd end this game with back to back punts down inside the 10 and this is just a taste of what King's middle of the pack years look like and like I said these two were largely down years for King only averaging 45.2 and 44.5 and 14 and 15 respectively ironically enough though these years were reflective of the Raiders organization as a whole who were having some rough years with a three win season in 14 and a seven and nine record in 15 just showing that sometimes it's hard to outshine your organization this is all just a teaser let me give you the taste of of what you're here for, the season of dominance. The season that wasn't just good for punters, but made Marquette King a household name. It opens up against the Saints, taking on another one of the greats of punning, Thomas Morstead, and someone King was known to go ball for ball against during the offseason. And by this point, people were very familiar with just the raw power King could put behind his punts, but this year, he would add so, so much more. Four punts in the first game, capped off by a massive 62-yarder that, in the NFL, we like to call a little 60-40. When you're past the minus 40-yard line, you just kick it into the end zone and net 40 plus yards because we've learned that if you can average above 40 yards of net you're going to be one of the top 10 in the leagues and a gorgeous 43 yarder to pin the saints inside the five and what's best is that his team actually came out on top after a nail biter meaning that every little punt was worth it and now against a stacked falcons team he put on another show with a 64 yarder to pin them inside the 10 followed out with a 40 yarder to the nine yard line and another 55 yarder that should have kept the falcons inside their own territory but some terrible lane integrity left the outside lane open for a big return king would make sure that the next punt would be fair caught and assuming a bit better coverage that means that this game should have been a four for four inside the 20 and it probably takes away a falcon score to keep keep the game at 28 and potentially change the entire outcome. Now against the Titans, yes, he hit a 60 yarder and a 72 yarder to show off this big leg we already knew he had, but he also had an absolutely smothering pair of punts go out of bounds inside the 10 yard line during this easy win. And it just doesn't stop. We're talking about how he held Devin Hester to just 42 total punt return yards across eight punts while simultaneously putting up a 51 
yard average is do you realize how hard it is to net 46 yards a punt against a ravens coach devin hester you just don't do it and there he was forcing fair catches keeping it out of bounds downing it inside the 10 against arguably the most dangerous return man to ever step foot on a football field against jacksonville he's just showboating at this point his first punt is just a banker with a short return next punt he puts a little too much air under it boom muffed gets the ball back and gets some points next one 60 yarder yeah a nice little return but guess what you're still starting inside the 10 bitch. next one is another 60 yarder that is, has a short return but there's a holding call for the cherry on top and how about another 56 yarder to follow that up but you know this game for another reason if you know king because up by just 10 points the jags are still within striking distance and things have already gone horribly wrong on this drive this king lines up at fourth and 24 and then another disaster strikes the snap comes in low now most punters here pick the ball up rush and try to get off whatever type of punt they can risking a nasty miss hit or shank but if you haven't been told yet king isn't most punters he picks it up sees just enough green to take off with it are you kidding me marquette moves up an echelon as he extends the drive to allow the raiders to score once again completely putting this game out of reach but in just seven games king has been a walking talking and sometimes dancing highlight machine but he didn't come here just to play half the season against the bucks he adds a massive 67 yarder with no return to his tape along with a slew of inside the 20 punts most notably a pearl starting the bucks at their 11 to keep them too backed up to do anything during overtime resulting in an oakland win and even though it seemed like he could do no wrong i think his highest high comes against the buffalo bills the moment that was just the icing on the cake and probably his most notable moment of all time we have just over two minutes left in the game the raiders have a commanding lead and the bills decide to throw everything at king where he draws the roughing the kicker on top of hitting a 62 yard nuke on top of picking up the flag and dancing with it and getting his own flag i mean this was the moment i realized punning could be cool while many have called it a classless act i mean his coaches clearly didn't feel the same way and king even admitted to his coach he didn't realize it was illegal and in his defense us punters don't come close to flags very often and we aren't typically in the meetings where you go over that part of the rule book because punters just don't celebrate often and when we do it often looks like somebody rolling their face on a keyboard during a fighting game just hitting every input at one time and while he would go on to finish this season as good as ever reluctantly though in the middle of Pat McAfee's greatest year, meaning he only earned a second All-Pro spot, but he definitely earned a spot in everybody's hearts as one of the most fun punters to watch in the history of the NFL, and it's all thanks to this 2016 season.